Lovely. Thanks, Jeremy. Well, good afternoon, everybody, and welcome to this meeting of the Education Skills Corporate Delivery Committee on the 27th of July, 2022. Uh, welcome, everyone in the room, and welcome, everyone online. Now, last time you remember, I was too scared to come into the Gloucester room to do this in person, so I stayed in the comfort of my study in the house. So bear with me if I make mistakes. I've got people on hand to help me and point me in the right direction, but I feel quite confident at the moment, which is probably a worry, if I'm uh -huh. honest. So, OK, so we'll, we'll move on to apologies for absence. I think we've got yeah, apology. Uh, apology from Councillor John Curtis. Do we have any others online? No, lovely, thank you. Uh, the second item on the agenda is disclosures and per of personal and prejudicial interest. Do we have any? Thank you. Number three on the agenda is the minutes of the last uh, meeting. So we have the minutes all being distributed of the meeting on the 22nd of June. I'll go through uh, for accuracy first, page one and page two. Do we have any? Well, can I ask you if you're content to um, agree them as a true record of the meeting? Can we approve and sign? Proposed, Lyndon. Thank you very much. Can we have a seconder? Uh, Sandra, much, thank yeah. you. Thank you very much. Thank you. Do we have any matters arising from the minutes that are not part of the agenda for today's meeting? It's quite difficult with so many screens to know which one to look at. You've got to focus yourself. I mean, tips and pointers, fellow chair. This is. <laughs> <laughs> so um, the next uh, item on the agenda is a number four, the education department update that we've all, all been uh, sent through. We've got Sarah here from Education who's kindly put this information together for us. Um, so um, have we had a chance to read through the information? Yes, everybody OK with this? Uh, Sarah, do you want to talk us through any key points? Please, that'd be lovely if you could. Yeah, no problem. So um, this was a, an action from the last meeting just to give a bit of context really around education services in Swansea. Um, so I'm not sure if you want me to go through some of the the, the slides or do just any raise key points really but um yeah no problem um so in terms of swansea schools we've got 91 mainstream schools but there's 94 settings altogether um so of that there's 77 primaries and 10 of those are welsh medium we have 14 secondaries and two of those are welsh medium uh, we have two special schools Ascol creek glass and Ascol penabrin and we have maesteru our pupil referral unit um so in terms of uh, numbers of staff in schools, we have um, 1,870 just under uh, full-time equivalent teaching staff and then two, 2,026 uh, support staff. But just a, an important point, that's not catering and cleaning, that's that's sort of TAs and sort of central support staff. Um, so that's our school profile. So that's our school profile. Sorry, I think that was myself echoing there. Hello, somebody online there? Or is that a bit of interference? That's okay. Please carry on, Sarah. Thank you. Um, so for our learners in Swansea, so it's not on the slide, but at the last uh, pupil level annual school census, we had 35,900 learners uh, in Swansea. So that's how many learners we have. Um, just under 30% of our learners living in the top 20% of most deprived areas in Wales. Um, just over 22% of our statutory age learners are eligible for free school meals, which is higher than the Wales average. Uh, just under 11% of our learners are fluent in Welsh. And that's lower than the Wales average. Uh, just over 16% of our learners are from ethnic minority backgrounds. And again, that's higher than the Welsh average. 24% uh, of our learners have special educational needs. Um, the the legislation is changing there so the definition uh, of that uh, will be different but that was the case as of april 21 um and again that's higher than the the welsh average um 117 children per 10,000 are looked after by the local authority compared to 115 for wales um and 31 of learners are placed in out county provision so I, I suppose that's the vulnerable learner context for swansea as well uh, we do have a high number of those um, so in sense of our school buildings, um, so we recently presented this to Weston. So since our last inspection in 2013, um, we delivered over £216 million worth of school capital schemes, and that's both rebuilds and remodelling. 
Um, 56 percent of our schools are category A and B in terms of their condition um, and there's a suitable strategy to maintain those going forward. Um, so the education budget, the, the figure there is in your in your packs um, and the aim in Swansea is to try and delegate as much as we can uh, to schools in order to then use that directly with learners. Um, and none of our schools at present are in a deficit reserve position. So that's the, the context and the profile of our schools in Swansea. Uh, that's lovely. Thank you very much, Sarah. Can, can I ask uh, members, please, for questions? And as you think or check your notes for your questions, can I just ask a, um, a few questions and I, I make a couple of points? So we've got 91 mainstream schools, but 94 altogether. What's the difference with the three? Uh, so that's the two special schools and the pro. Thanks. Thank you very much. Um, when we consider Welsh medium education, would we say that we are compliant with where we should be uh, in Wales? How would we compare? I know this maybe is not quite fair, but can I just have a view on that, please? Uh, yes, yeah, so we've just recently had our Welsh um, Welsh and Education Strategic Plan um, approved by Cabinet. Um, and I'd say that we have an ambitious strategy over the next 10 years to uh, develop and maintain our Welsh meeting provision. Excellent. It's like we practiced this. Well done. We, we really have. Um, so do we have any hands up on screen, Jay? I can, I'm looking. I can't see any at the moment. Yes, Jay. Can, can you, hand where, up where is, oh, there you are. Like, lovely. Thank you, Mike. Please carry on. Yeah. Yeah. You mentioned about the uh, school conditions, 56 percent. As you know, we still got quite a lot of schools, Victorian schools uh, within within the county. Um, how often are these schools inspected? Is it annually or biannually? Are we able to let let us know? Because obviously we're all governors, and we'd be very interested in what's what's happening with the schools. Lovely, thank you, Mike. Sarah, could you answer that, please? Um, I'll have to check on that. Uh, my understanding is that they have been annual, but I'm not sure whether the COVID has impacted on that. So I think our uh, capital team manager would be able to answer in the next meeting if if required. Yeah, yeah, that's I'd be, okay. I, Chair, that okay, I'd, be grateful, I'd be grateful for that information if possible. If we if if we could have that information. Thank you, Councillor White. It's not easy to see the hands up on the screen for me. I'm saying this as I'm going, just to might benefit other people who when you chair a meeting in the Gloucester room. Now I can see Councillor Gordon. Fiona, please. Thank you. Um Sarah, have you got, um, do you know if plans are in place to make those changes to those 31 um, children with additional learning needs that are placed out of county? You know, is, is there a strategy to look at changing our provision to bring those into county or are we just sort of accepting that we can't meet all their needs within Swansea? I, I think, Chair, that, that might be one. There we go. More than, more than Sarah, to be honest, and, and the answer is, you know, yes, it is. It is one of one of the objectives we're looking at. Um, you know that, that we want to educate as many and provide for and meet the needs of as many young people and children in Swansea as we can in Swansea. And I mean, obviously, there'll always be, as you know, ex uh, instances where that's going to be impossible or very difficult for us to achieve. But I think, as a general principle, that that has to be our aim. Um, and in terms of your question, Mike, yes, I think, you know, um, the WESP, uh, which has now been signed off by the minister, I'm happy to say, you know, that does include provision uh, for growth in, in Welsh medium education. Um, obviously, we, we'll be reviewing uh, both capacity and uh, demand as, th as things move on. That's excellent. Thank you, Councillor Smith. Yeah, um, can I just just clarify? Yes, with of course, go on, Mike. With Councillor Smith, I really in looking at the the conditions really of of our uh, older schools, uh, Robert. That's the sort of thing that I wanted to find information out on, really. Yeah, so sorry, Mike. Yes, um, as Sarah said, she's going to find out the answer and feedback on that, and then in in accordance with Fiona and uh, Fiona, uh, Councillor Gordon's question, she was talking about out of county placements. So we have 31 children placed out of county for educational purposes now, uh, and that's that was picking up on a separate question. Councillor White, if that's OK. Is that OK, Fiona? Yeah, thank you. Yeah. Yeah. And, and, and to answer your question, Mike, you know, we, we, yes, th these are periodic reviews and um, th th there's a, 
the capital maintenance program and the 21st century schools. Um, what was the 21st century schools program? We 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 use all funding streams to try and uh, ensure that the the estate is as modern and and up to date and meets the needs as far as possible. Is that okay, Councillor White? Yes, thank you, yes. Chair. Yes, thank, thank you. Thank you. Um, I, I press is it the red button? Oh, the press. red button to talk. But if you want to speak in the room, I think just the physical hand. Yeah, Chair. Right. So yeah, no, carry on, Linda and Councillor Jones next. Thank you. Right. Sorry. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> great. Thank you. Um, uh, on on the school buildings, how are we getting along with greening them? If you like, you know, obviously uh, uh, to make them more environmentally friendly as we sort of move on. I realise this is a. Uh, it's not cheap and it's a rolling sort of program, but how how are we doing with it? It's it's something we we, we are monitoring, uh, Linda, and I, I can come back to you with um, a more detailed uh, breakdown of, of where we're at, you know, rather than uh, uh, try and uh, address it this afternoon, if that's OK. But I, I can tell you, uh, give you the, the, the position then uh, accurate at the next meeting, if that's OK. Great. Thank you very much. I could just to add value to that and Councillor Jones, um, the two hundred and sixty million pound school capital schemes, they would have all reflected the robust environmental standards that we've seen, uh, you know, getting more and more stringent over time, which is great. But I suppose the query would be about the older school estate, you know, that uh, where, where the issues would be perhaps yeah, more it, prominent. Well, when we're designing new schools, you know, the, these things are built in um, from 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 from, uh, from scratch. So, um, but I. I in terms of, of greening the, the existing uh, uh, school estate, I think that that's something I need to come back to you on, but it, it is it is a name of ours. Excellent, thank you very much. So th please put your hands up. Uh, we can see Councillor Hopkins. Bev? Yeah, thank you. Um, just, just to make the committee aware, uh, what we are doing in the land ward is transferring some of our park um, over to the school as a land transfer so that the school will have some green area because at the moment it's only concrete but that is something we've done as ward members so perhaps other ward members might uh, might be in a position to look at some, doing something like that to enhance the green areas in the schools oh wow that's that's a great idea very mm. interesting and that 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 can, that sits hand in glove with the kinds of um information that we saw in the last year's committee, the PDC committee, with the focus on uh, Councillor Gordon's point, I think it was Fiona who raised it, the importance of outdoor education and the information that we had from Swansea University and the examples of best practice from uh, Cruyff Primary and, and head teacher Mr Dylan Say, uh, who was a great champion for getting young people out and about, not forest school, learning dens and fires, you know, but actual education in the outdoor spaces in the woodland near three crosses which is fantastic so jez please keep your eye on hands going up as i i want to make a couple of little points here what, what i got from this report was a was a very very strong uh, set of uh, baseline information which is really important i mean you know, nearly 36,000 learners in, in Swansea schools. That's enormous, isn't it? You know, it's a, it's a, what a huge complex machine uh, Swansea's education system is with 94 schools and, and 36,000 uh, children and young people. Um, and there are notable things that really jumped out at me. Uh, strong school inspection outcomes. No school currently in Estin monitoring. Now, there is never in this local authority, I know, uh, room for complacency at all. But what a testimony that is to all the people engaged with the, the running of the schools. It, it is something else. I think it's very impressive. Um, it, it would be interesting, Sarah, can I ask you, if could we have an idea of the additional staff that are not outlined here. So we've got the teachers and support staff, but the catering, cleaning, caretaking, etc. If it's available, I, I, just, to, just to get an idea, because they're going on for £200 million of annual investment, so like a billion pounds over five years, um, that, that has a huge impact on the economy of Swansea on its own. You know, it's a lot. there's a lot of jobs, there's a lot of opportunities here at all levels, teaching, non-teaching uh, and supporting the the overarchingly important challenge of educating our our children. 
what also jumped out in, for me was um, using 20% most deprived areas in Wales, nearly 30% of school children in the 20% area. And I know committee members, and we have new committee members, uh, of course, but last year pointed out that the WIMD can be something of a blunt tool. We can just use the 20% or the 10% category, but overlook actual issues at a grassroots level. I remember uh, members pointing out that you might have uh, a lovely, a comfortable, leafy one end of the street, but the other end of the street, we've got particularly challenging problems. And that's the reality. So we need to take a very, very local um, approach to understanding the issues at a grassroots level. Um, I, we, we've touched upon the the, the Welsh uh, uh, um, the, the, the the Welsh in Education Strategic Plan, which is great, um, and and improvements over time there, I think, have been quite remarkable from my perspective. Uh, so, thanks for this report. I keep squinting to see if other hands are up, and I can see that the cabinet member, Councillor Robert Smith, wants to come in. But before I call you in, Robert, sorry, can, can sorry. I just can I just say that? Um, that the, this forward strategy, the clear track record of new build and refurbish uh, pro, uh, um, projects has brought about a dramatic improvement in the condition of schools and education in Swansea for many children. But of course, it's it's a work in progress. There's more to come. Councillor Smith. Yes, it's just to go back to, to the point you made there about, about um, the link between um, education and social deprivation economic deprivation now we we know that this this is not a new uh, agenda by any means um we've got we've got the welsh index and multiple deprivation we've also got uh in the, the work that we've done around the pupil uh, development grant that is as it now uh, is prior to that there have been other initiatives and there, there was an initiative about 20 years ago if you remember that deliberately targeted those schools in the most deprived serving the most deprived communities and i think yes that that, that achieved um some of its objectives but we were aware that we weren't reaching uh, by any stretch of the imagination all the children uh, that needed the, the additional support what i think we've got to recognize is that uh, progress was being made up until the pandemic and the impact of the pandemic which on this committee has rightly highlighted this uh, in the report that went to the cabinet last week, uh, the impact of, the, of uh, the pandemic on those that specific group of learners um, is something that's, that's a major issue. And, and I think moving forward, um, we're in danger of uh, losing any ground that was made up. And that's, that, that emphasizes the, the importance of uh, that agenda moving forward, Chair. That's very insightful. Uh, Robert, I thank you for that. I, I don't know if you've stolen my notes, but but that was one of the key points that I was going to make is building on this complacency query, you know, and there is an energy and a drive and we need to be conscious of redoubling our efforts because of the issues that the pandemic has given for so many of the 36,000 children in Swansea schools. And we've seen those issues across the city and county of Swansea area, and we are in that recovery process. Councillor Jones. There we are. Th th thank you. Yeah, uh, to, to, to carry on from the point that you made about uh, currently no school is in is, is being monitored by Estin, which is extremely good news. And if you look at when we had the old Aero, which has now gone covering the whole of Mid and West Wales, that was certainly not the case in all other counties. Uh, so it really is good news. Uh, and I know certainly the scrutiny body has followed up on schools when they have in the past been on been monitored and how the improvements that have been made. But certainly it's a huge achievement not to have schools uh, being monitored by Estin. And the other thing, big, big opportunity and, and challenge for Swansea is that we've got to grasp the opportunities of the city deal. Um, uh, because obviously there are real opportunities to get good, well-paid jobs for people and children in Swansea to remain in Swansea. And they don't need to, but we need to give them that opportunity so they don't have to look further afield for their future careers. And I think that is one of the challenges and, and, and one I know that everybody is keen to meet. Lovely. Thank you, Lyndon. 
And we've got, thank you. I am struggling with that screen there. And I, I think what it is, I've got my glasses on, I'm looking up, and then it's all blurry, and I've got to do this all the time. So I, I'm learning. Uh, Councillor Jardine, please. Yvonne? Uh, thanks, Chair. Yeah. Um, OK. So it's just continuing from what has been said by Robert and uh, Councillor Jones just now. But I, I feel, um, and I could be totally wrong, um, often not, but I feel that it's okay, a lot of this is okay for the children, but if we can't do something for the parents, for the 30% that's in the most deprived, that um, th there's really no long-term effect. And well-paid jobs, Lyndon mentioned, but, you know, if you're, um, if, if you're at the bottom end, if you're in that 30% and you're struggling, and you're just managing to keep your head above water. Your children, yes, are usually our main focus as parents, and they are being seen to, they're being educated. But if when they go home, mom is depressed, not well, can't, you know, poor housing, then I sort of feel we need to be tackling holistically and I know that's what we as a council aim to do and I know that's what society does but I just feel sometimes that the ones that are really at the bottom really struggling are quite often overlooked um, that, that's it really so, th thank you Yvonne again insightful and I think that we've seen a lot of um a lot of issues exacerbated by the pandemic that were already quite, well, not quite incredibly stressful for families. And uh, recovering from that low point is is going to take time. And um, I think it's one of the key challenges of this committee is to really dig in to the education to make sure we see horizontal links with colleagues in other committees uh, and and in the, and in other agencies as well, and make sure that we step together. And, um, and I, 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 uh, I, Chair, can I? Sorry, yeah. Yeah, sorry. yes, go on, Yvonne. Wait a second, please, Robert. Thank you. Thank you. Sorry, sorry. Um, I keep forgetting this a lot. Okay. I just wondered also with the children, uh, I know some schools are doing um, counselling, you could say, support, because I think sometimes we forget that the children also live through the pandemic and suffered but they've gone back to school now certainly in, in the school that one of the schools i'm governor for but there isn't there isn't anything really for the children as such so it's i just wondered um you know are we doing anything to support them Thank you, Yvonne. Can I, sorry, Robert, can I just add one little thing quickly before you come in? Um, yeah, I, I think in the context of sport and community engagement, uh, I am still uh, quite active. I still play cricket. Um, I shouldn't mention here that I scored 61 not out for Anastasia seconds two weeks ago, but I am going to. I'm going to have it tattooed on me somewhere. Um, and what we've seen is, I think it's fair to say, is we've seen a massive resurgence after lockdown in sports clubs across Swansea. I was talking to a colleague of mine the other day who works in, uh, is organising sporting activities in Pentlegay. Uh, over 200 children and young people uh, are turning up for those activities there. If you go up to All Stars in any cricket club, Mumbles, Gosain and Rug, um, Anastawe, Morriston, you will see hundreds of children and young people out and about enjoying open spaces. So I'm not saying that's unique to the school, but the links with the schools, sports clubs and similar organisations is really seeing those activities. And there's an energy and a drive there. I think we, everyone's delighted to be, to be allowed out. So I, I don't know if that helps, Yvonne. It does help. It does help. And it does go a long way too, where it's... Um, returning the children regaining their confidence and realizing that yeah that was a blip and we we can move on so yes thanks chair thank you thank you very much councillor smith yes and, and i think it, it, it's i'd like to thank yvonne for, for raising this issue because i think it we've got to recognize the importance of schools and the importance of what the education system can uh, can do but this needs to be part of a bigger Picture. And yes, we, the schools have a, have a role to play in supporting the children, 
there are opportunities for schools to engage with pa engage parents and um, undertake family engagement um, programs and, and uh, important work like that. But this needs to be part of a much broader uh, holistic approach to uh, tackling poverty and, and, and uh, addressing those issues. You know, schools can do a lot, but there, there is only so much that schools can achieve as well. And I think, you know, we have to be realistic in what we expect the education system to uh, to be able to achieve here. So I think that in, and it's it, it's it's a sobering thought uh, what, what you just said, uh, Yvonne, and I think it's important we bear that in mind. Thank you, Councillor Smith. Uh, and I think that was one of the key points for the committee last year. We started off with a presentation from Professor Chris Chapman, who said that the schools can tackle these issues in isolation. They, they are too big for any single agency to be able to tackle. So that integrated approach, coordinated, collaborative approach is everything. So so I'm looking for hands. I can't see any hands of anyone in the room. Want to add anything else on agenda item number four? Are we OK? Can I move on? OK, yeah, I see nods. Thank you very much. Well, thank you, Sarah. That was the really informative and the purpose was for us to establish that baseline. You know that that is the the um, the, the baseline that we're moving on from here. Um, so we're moving on to agenda item number five, which is looking at the work program for 2022 2023. And my starting point here is to, to make sure that we remember that we produced a, a report based on last year's committee. I know it's the PDC policy development move into corporate delivery, but uh, council councillor colleagues uh, worked hard on a very challenging agenda consistently throughout the year. The report supporting the challenge challenges for learners in recovering from the pandemic went to cabinet after going through this committee and being signed up by colleagues. I went to cabinet on the 21st of July, and of course I'm going to turn to cabinet uh, um, cabinet member Robert Smith. Uh, in, in a second, but the, the, there were 10 recommendations for, from last year's report, and I know we've all seen them, but I want to just a whistle stop, just as a refresher. Understanding Swansea and its neighbourhoods, not making assumptions about what we what, what we see before us, uh, being led by the current data, current statistics to make sure that we hit the current targets, mapping community assets and community engagement in all schools, so we can see that horizontal engagement with the life of the school and community, um, to review free school meals as an indicator of vulnerability. Um, we know there's major changes, the Welsh Government, and we are seeing that changing quite significantly. Um, to consider schools' engagement with parents and communities, um, to consider philosophy in Swansea schools as, a, as an aid for effective communication and to support wellbeing. Um, and I'm looking at the chair of the scrutiny committee here as well. We saw some fantastic information on this previously, yeah. particularly from, I think it was Glyn Coughlin School at the time, man, about in Glyn Coughlin. Um, uh, looking for the council to become, I think, uh, the first ACE informed, adverse childhood experience informed council in Wales because adverse childhood experiences, understanding them and acting on them is incredibly important. Uh, number seven, vocational education. And I know colleagues were delighted um, with the information we received on vocational ed education and to consider how we develop opportunities and consider the provision of on-site facilities as we go forward, not as a second best for any child, but as an appropriate route for children. Uh, recommendation number eight was about learning champions, people who inspire and motivate learners. And the council was to work with both universities in this context. Number nine, was about um, library cards, leisure, sport facilities and outdoor learning as part of the school curriculum. And uh, Mr. Sayre from Croix Primary gave us the phrase, happy children learn. And I, I thought that was quite inspiring for me. And number 10 was for the council to publish its exclusion reduction strategy. So some of this work was already in train. Some of this work was already moving forward through officers, through Sarah and, and colleagues, Helen and her, her team, and others then relate to other aspects of the council. But that was supported by Cabinet um, last week, which is which is great. And um, uh, uh, Councillor Smith, do, do you want to come in there? I know in the cabinet last week it was like the Robert Smith show. I think you had about <laughs> seven agenda items there. I think, but yes, it 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 it, it did. Uh, there were a number of items related to education. But can I thank the committee for the report as I did in cabinet? 
uh, cabinet was um, happy to accept all the uh, recommendations coming from from the PDC, because I think it it does um, lay out uh, the direction that we want to go as a council. Um, there are some issues there uh, that are ongoing. There are some that uh, will be addressed as we move forward, uh, and I think uh, all of those recommendations help to set the direction for uh, the next five years in the council. And, and I look forward. Uh, to working with the committee and reporting back to the committee on the progress that's made in uh, in implementing uh, uh, the recommendations, Chair. Thank you very much, Councillor Smith. So the report we've got as part of Agenda Item 5 Work Programme 2022-2023, um, this provides us with a draft outline of work programme areas for 2022-2023. Now, what we put in our work programme, we decide to put in our work programme. So this information that's listed here has come from lots of discussions. It's always informed by what people say in meetings. It's informed by the discussions I might have with a cabinet member, with a director of education, with, with uh, Councillor Lyndon Jones in his scrutiny function. So this is taking all of that information and then saying, right, OK, wow, how do we turn this into a dynamic work programme to make a, a powerful difference? in our context. So under 2.1, we've got um, a, a number of items there in, in the table, and I'll just read them out. I know we've got them in front of us, but it might be helpful uh, for people who might watch this in recorded uh, format. Um, so there's CDC work items, strengthening school leaders. There's attendance and inclusion policy. There's strengthened and effective school governance. Now, there's three key areas. Now, we will have eight or nine meetings of this committee in the year. Um, now, those three key areas, I think, cover huge, hugely important and significant areas for every part of our education system in Swansea. And they... Um, could easily be turned into 30 key items because they're so expansive. So uh, there's three key items. I'd ask for comments about them. I'd ask for um, perspectives from committee members, please. Um, our approach needs to be focused on um, challenging intelligently where we are in this post-pandemic recovery situation, um, looking at the evidence that we've got, being led by what works and looking for areas of imagination and innovation, all of it in the interests of children and young people in our schools, in, in education, in Swansea. So can I, I know you've all seen the, the report. I'm not going to through, go through in any other detail. Can I ask for any comments or perspectives of what we've got before us, please? Councillor Jones. Okay. Uh, I, I think on the attendance one, I think it's that we've seen because of the pandemic and people obviously uh, working from home, there's been a dip in attendance. And that is quite key that we get those children back into school, especially the ones who are, um, um, you know, need, need extra help. And I think it's really vital we get look at how we can do that and uh, and learn from some schools who are doing well. And, and that we can share that practice. I think that is quite important uh, because when they are in school, they're in a better environment. And I know certainly with the scrutiny uh, panel last year, we actually got one of the schools in, uh, and it was a primary school, to say what it was like to be back in school. Now, not us second guessing, but what the children actually thought. And they all said God, it was really good. They met their friends in school. They really valued the experience of getting back into school. And that's the sort of message we need to be getting to those children. So I think that's quite a key one, but also strengthening school leaders because they they leave the school uh, and uh, you know and what they do not just in the school but actually work in the community as well and encourage that and I'd like to think as a councillor in my ward I actually help that uh, be, be, to be achieved and I think that's one of the things again that we need to do and uh, so that children feel uh, a part of and as the chair will say is one of the things you often say a school isn't an island it's it's the community as well 
well and, and when they feel part of that community they do feel more valued and that puts them in good stead for their future life as well so i think those are two sort of key areas thank you councillor jones can we go to councillor jardine next please Thanks, Chair. OK, um, I agree with what Councillor Jones has said about the attendance, but I'm not sure if that automatically includes exclusion. But for me, exclusion, the reduction, the why, the how, what happens when you exclude a child for two days and then a week and then you have a meeting and you exclude them again, I feel that that's quite demoralizing and i think that that's something that we really need to look at as to is there an alternative is there an alternative to sending a child home um days at a time weeks at a time mom or dad or both parents are working or not not in a position to help and i could go on and on about that particular one the attendance yes i agree that also needs to be looked at. For me, those would be my two main focus because with the, I come across parents who still say, oh, I don't want my child to go to school because of uh, COVID. They're, they're not allowing or moving forward or, or looking at what the child is losing by not going to school and not being educated at home either. So yes, um, those two would be mine. Lovely, Thanks, thank you. Yeah, thank you, Councillor Jardine. Um, the, the PDC report that went to Cabinet on the 21st last um, last week, um, the, part of that was published in the Exclusion Reduction Strategy. And I think when we looked at this in the PDC last year, we, we had some fantastic information from officers, um, which covers some of the concerns that you've got. And um, looking at exclusion in the round and in what's in the best and longer term benefit of the young person, the child and the young person, does it actually help in any way really as we go forward or does it do more damage than good? And so, so the exclusion reduction strategy is in the pipeline and will come. I should have said really that what we need to plan in the work plan is an update on the 10 recommendations. So as we go forward, maybe we can have an update, maybe December, maybe before Christmas, to see where we are with each of the recommendations and have a report which uh, which shows us the progress being being made. Uh, can I go next, please, to uh, Councillor Mike White? Thank you, Chair. Um, I think it's chair. Yeah, on on the points that you've got within the um, that that's within the area that that, that we're looking at, clearly in in section one, it is clearly important that um, we've got sort of good good uh, leadership there and making sure policies are, are updated within schools and 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 fit for purpose, so that we're showing that we are. Um, clearly uh, in, involved in improving the school environment and within the community as well. So if any areas that we get asked about or um, question on with trust from within the community, we've got these, 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 these resources available for those people. I think that's very, very important in, in, in how, how, how we can build up the the the, the old, uh, ethos of working right 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 across the the, the, the old school community. Um, yeah, in regards to uh, the issue with with attendance, I think yeah, you know, because we had really issues with because of COVID and that, and lots of parents very, uh, can children very cautious coming back to school and that. But I think it's important that we've got we've got the support of parents and the guardians as well, because as you've been now elected. Education is the most important part of 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 a, of of a child's life. You know, after education, it, it's a big wide world of uh, employment and work. So I think it's important that we that we can get parents and guardians on board in regards to getting and making sure how important it is for the children to attend school. And uh, in regards to the governance as well. I believe CS yes, all about management skills and our head teachers, not their teachers, and more they they social workers, they uh, you know, uh 
for finance, you know, finance officers and everything, you name it, the, the, their teachers are now uh, jacks of all trades. I think it, that's important that we've got the the that we've got the 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 management skills um that's within within the school and also that we do have uh, each school have have a really really good positive school development plan on on how we and on and how we can take take our schools forward that that's really helpful thank you very much uh, councillor white head teachers not head teachers anymore i mean that is this has occurred to me consistently over some time um the the, the pathway that professional educators i think we might have more than one in the room here yeah, we've got a few i know uh and and virtual room of course and um you know the, the challenges are enormous you go into teaching m most often not always perhaps for a love of education and to inspire and motivate the next generation and then as you go through the management structure you turn into an accountant you turn into a hr uh, expert, you turn into uh, a facilities manager, you turn into all those things. Mike, there's insight in those words. And th th this is an opportunity for us to look at these issues, to unpick those issues in detail, in careful, um, uh, measured, systematic manner to see what the issues are, how things can be improved, and how we can uh, really put things on a, on a stronger footing with a very strong focus on succession planning for every school in in swansea as well as i squint across there i can see the councillor fiona gordon has a hand up fiona yes thanks chair um within the the item on um attendance and inclusion i'd be really keen to find out more about how um how we are preparing for well how we're dealing really with the the transformation in terms of aln reform and how we're um, implementing the new ALNET code. So how schools are, are, are managing with the new process, um, you know, adapting to that new process and how local authority uh, procedures are, are adapting as well, because it is, um, you know, it's, it's an ongoing process. It's taking place over time, but I would be interested in finding out how we're doing, you know, honestly, um, in terms of that because um, it's something that we knew was coming, but, you know, on top of the pandemic, you know, it's it's sort of landed and then timescales have altered and, and so on. So everybody's having to having to adapt, I think, and um, work on two systems alongside each other. But yeah, it would be good to find out some more about that, I think, if that's OK. Yeah, absolutely. Very positive suggestion. Do we have any other comments in the room? Online? What what I would say, Jenna, is thank members for, for their contributions. Um, yes, ac across the three areas there, governance, um, leadership and, and succession planning. And of course, we're talking here about leadership at all levels in the school. Um, we need our head teachers. We need our deputy head teachers, assistant heads. We also need that crucial middle tier leadership. Um, and if you look at the school improvement um, evidence, if you look at Estin's inspection, that we, we can't underestimate the importance of middle leadership as well and, and ensuring that we have robust uh, a robust here there in, in each of our schools. Going back to the question of attendance and inclusion, and I think that's what what it is it, it's in that word inclusion is we need to include our young people. And I think you know attendance depends on on how we do that. And as Fiona mentioned there, Yes, there have been some major strides we've taken forward in the uh, implementation of the new ALN um, system, but of course that that's part of a, a wider picture. And I think in you know, the way uh, we uh, we as a council support our schools to meet the needs of all children and young people across the, across Swansea, I think that that is uh, going to be crucial in this, and it's how we continue to refine the way we work. To enable that to happen, and I think that that's going to be crucial uh, if, if we're going to address these issues, Chair. Thank you, Councillor Smith. Um, for, for my point of view, I think these really, as I said uh, at the start of this agenda, right, um, these are broad. Uh, there's a lot of detail. There's a lot of meat in each each one of these, um, and um, this focus on continually supporting staff. Uh, what 
school leaders aren't required at what level? And most of us would think perhaps of the head teacher, the deputy head teacher, but mm -hmm. as the cabinet member, Rob Smith says, this runs much deeper than that. So it's unpicking. It's not making any assumptions here as we go forward. And it's about making sure that we take a, I think, a horses for courses approach and, and ensuring, to steal another phrase from Councillor White, uh, making sure that we aren't fit for purpose in 2022 and planning the next steps. When we look at um, strengthening and effective school governance, um, we, we're looking at uh, governing bodies of schools. We're looking at people who give it their time as volunteers to join governing bodies. And any governing body, in my experience over the last 20 years, any person that's given up their time for a governing body will know how challenging this voluntary role can be. Uh, and it can be incredibly stressful and pressurised. So. Um, what, what do we mean effective school governance and how can we make sure that we have a more robust system in place for governance uh, for individual schools and collections of schools? So there's great opportunities here. And as we step forward, the support of our uh, our schools, our teaching and non-teaching staff, our councillors, uh, our governors, governing bodies will be incredibly important as we go forward, I think. So on that point, if we are content, I'm looking for hands, I can't see any more, um, then I would propose that, that we accept these areas of recommendation and we would ask for officers to provide us with a September report where we flesh out some of the key issues here. We touch upon them here, but to flesh them out in accordance with councillor colleagues um, perspectives so that we can have that work pro program. If we can have on the work programme, an update on the PDC, a report for, I would say in December, at least we'll have an interim progress report at that point, then that would seem to be a, a sensible suggestion. Could we start for the next meeting? We don't have a meeting in August, but for the meeting in September to have a work plan more, you know, built up, worked out in a bit more detail. But could we have some baseline information about school leadership as it stands today? So we know we've got the 90, 94 in total schools, but school leadership across. So any relevant facts, figures, information would be a real uh, good starting point for us as a foundation to move on from. Can I ask committee, is that is that acceptable committee members? Are we content? Yes, OK. Put your thumb up, Sam. <laughs> I can see you there. Sam's unusually quiet. I always get nervous when Sam's quiet. <laughs> I'm joking, Vice Chair. Uh, OK, so that's great. That, that sounds like a a good um, plan as we go forward. OK, so that was agenda item number five. Uh, there's nobody indicating, nobody indicating in the room. Anybody else want to add anything at all? No. Um, so the next thing for us to note is that the next meeting is on Wednesday, the 28th of September at four o'clock. So we've got a bit of a break now. So I hope the sun comes back and I hope we all have an opportunity to enjoy the sunshine and have a bit of downtime. If that means sitting in your garden, great. If it means going to the Maldives for a month, that's equally great. But enjoy the summer. Thank you all very much, committee members and officers. Thank you very much. And on that point, I'll close the meeting. Thank you. Thanks, Dr. Thank you. Bye. Bye. Bye.